Have you ever struggled to build custom dashboard fast? We have. It appeared that Google Data Studio is a great solution to represent data. Let's go and see how it works. Hi, my name is Sergey, and I'm product expert here at Railsford. The dashboard market is really fragmented, and there are plenty of different solutions. Usually, you have to choose between heavy BI tools, which allow you to do everything, but the license can easily cost you $50,000, or simpler solutions, which are quite limited and can cover all your needs. Thankfully, there are easy-to-use solutions available as well, and Google Data Studio is a great example. This is a platform that allows you to create and share beautiful reports fast and smart. If you run a small or medium-sized business, or department in a big corporation, this video is for you. Let's go and build something great together today. This is a Google Data Studio tutorial for beginners. Today we will cover the following topics. Data Studio environment setup, how to create and manage data sources, how to build and share reports. As an example, we will build a recruitment dashboard from scratch. You will learn how to connect G sheets to a report, what are the dimensions, metrics, and aggregation functions? How to create tables, charts, and scorecards? How to build and manage filters? Also, we'll review styling basics and the way you can share your report. See the full agenda in the video description below. You can switch to a section you need using timestamps. Don't forget to ask your questions in comments. Data Studio is a part of Google Marketing Platform, and it has its own ecosystem. To get started, just visit datastudio.google.com and sign in using your Google account. If it's your first visit, you will need to set up Data Studio. Press Get Started, agree to the terms and conditions, leave the company name blank if you use the platform for personal needs, sign up for different subscriptions, There are four major concepts in Data Studio – Data Source, Connector, Report, and Explorer. Data Source and Reports have many-to-many -many relationships. This means that one report can use multiple sources of data, while the same data source can be connected to many reports. Today we are going to play with simple configuration – one report will use only one data source. Please keep in mind that changes in the data source apply to all connected reports. It's not that evident from the UX perspective. Connector is an interface of receiving data from various platforms like BigQuery, YouTube, Google Analytics, Facebook Ads, Spreadsheets, etc. While data source is a blueprint or a wrapper of a connector that you can modify. There are connectors provided by Google and created by the community. If you need a custom one, you can either create it yourself or transfer data to the data storage with an existing connector to it. Explorer is a what-do-you-see-is-what-do-you-get type of report, which is in beta stage for now. We will review it in our next videos. When you join Data Studio, you can easily navigate between Reports, Data Sources, and Explorers using the top menu. You get a few samples of dashboards you can open them and see what are the possibilities to build your custom report. Today we will build a recruitment dashboard using data from our applicant tracking system. The first step is to prepare our dataset. With a well-organized data, you can build a representative dashboard fast and easy. We use Pipedrive at our applicant's tracking system, but there is no Data Studio connector for this tool yet. This is why we pull data from Pipedrive to G-Sheets with the help of Coupler.io, a service that securely transfers data between platforms. And we use the G-Sheets data source to build our recruitment dashboard in the end. Not to spend too much time, we have already prepared needed file. With Coupler, you can select how often you would like your data to be updated, every hour, day, or by request. In our case, daily update is what we need. All new entries will appear on the list after the next daily import. We pull the data from Pipedrive to Applicants tab, and we use Applicants Filter tab to filter our data we will use for the dashboard. 
If you want your reports to work faster, we recommend to minimize your data sets. To avoid issues with data, follow a few simple rules when you shape your data set in Google Sheets. Don't use cell merge, keep each data record in a single row. Use the first row as a header. Each column should contain the same data type and format. Go back to Data Studio and create a data source. Pick a Google Sheets connector. It will offer you a list of Google Sheets shared with or owned by you. We select Pipedrive Data Stream Demo and the Applicants Filter Worksheet. Click Connect. If everything is successfully connected, you will see the list of column headers from your spreadsheet. By the way, in the video description you will find a link to a Google Sheet Pipedrive Data Stream Demo so you can repeat all the flow I'm gonna show you today. Metrics and dimensions are the building blocks of your reports. Metrics are marked blue, dimensions green. Metrics are the numbers contained in your data. In our case, it is salary and applicant ID. Dimensions are attributes of your data. Those are strings, dates, URLs, locations, etc. Usually, you don't have to change type of entries as Data Studio detects those correctly. However, in our case, country was detected as string, so we change it into country. Also, we can spot that salary is detected as a number. Let's change it to currency USD. At this stage, you can also add calculated fields. We will discuss those in our next videos. Name this data source Applicants Stream Demo. Once done, create a report. Select a name for your report. Let's call it Recruitment Dashboard Demo. Here we have our Working Canvas, Properties Panel, and Toolbox. On the top, you can find Control Panel with Refresh Data, Share Report, and change between View and Edit modes. You can create multiple pages for your reports by adding a new page. Use the top left control to switch between pages. You can duplicate and hide pages in the view mode. Property panel reflects properties of objects. As we don't have any objects selected, we can see the layout and theme settings for the whole report. Select the header visibility. It is preset to initially hidden. If you go to the view mode and want to use the control panel, you need to hover over it. If the header is preset to always show, it will be visible at any time. This is a better option for editing. Once done, switch back to initially hidden. In the view mode, you can see the list of your pages in the top left corner. Switch between pages using arrows or click in the center to select from the drop-down list. You can also select the navigation to be represented on the left, so that you can see the list of pages like this. In addition, you can also change canvas size for your convenience. Let's create a table with candidates list, their locations and salary data. Add a simple table by clicking at the chart in the menu and selecting the simple table. Data Studio is trying to shape a basic table out of random columns. We need to select the correct ones now. Let's say we want to see the list of candidates with their name, position, application date, responsible recruiter, location, and stage of the process. Let's start. In fact, all the fields we have mentioned, except for salaries, are dimensions. So we work with the dimensions field in the properties panel. Use Add Dimensions to see the list of options. We pull application date, applicant name, position, stage name, and owner name to identify the responsible recruiter. The owner name appeared without a space, plus it's better to call it recruiter name, as we need to keep a consistency in data source naming. Let's edit it. Go back to Spreadsheet, find the column, and rename it to recruiter name. If you change names of columns in the original file, you need to update the data source. In Data Studio, click Edit Data Source in the Properties panel. Or Resources, Manage Edit Data Sources, choose the needed data source, 
click Edit. You can see a button Refresh fields. It shows recently added fields in the missing fields. Click Apply. And our table is broken now. This happened because we refer to the dimension owner name. Data Studio is not yet that smart to replace one dimension with another. So we need to remove missing dimension and add the new ones. Data Studio highlights invalid dimensions. Just remove them. Now the table is fixed. Add recruiter name. Adjust the size of your table and the width of every column. Click on every vertical border and drag it. But it's easier to double click on any vertical border and Data Studio will adjust the column size to fit text automatically. Change the order of the columns by dragging and dropping dimensions in the Properties panel. As you can see, Data Studio have automatically added one metric. You might be confused by seeing some applied for applicant ID, as it doesn't have a lot of sense. We changed applicant ID to salary expectations. It is still has the sum stated. This is an aggregation function. We have only one salary record for each row. So the sum and average are equal just as median, maximum and minimum values. You can choose between these options in case you work with aggregational tables. We will show how it works a bit later today. For now, we select sum here. You might have only sum stated in the list and you can't use other aggregational function. This is because fields editing in report might be disabled. If you have such a problem, edit data source in the properties panel and turn on this option. Now you should see all the functions in the list. You can select how many rows you would like to see per page. You can see a summary row, but it doesn't make sense in our case. You can sort by metrics or by dimensions. Click on property and select the dimension to sort by. We will use application date. We want to see the newest applicants first, so let's select descending order. Let's also select a secondary sorting dimension. We want to also sort by position. Now we can see the applicant sorted by position and by date. You might want to change the name of the column right in Data Studio for a specific table. Go to Dimensions, select Dimensions to edit, change Salary Expectation to Salary. Recruiter name to Recruiter. Let's switch to the view mode. Click three dots. Here you can sort the table as you want, as well as export this table. To remove row number, go to Style, Table Body, turn off row numbers. In Style, you can also remove headers, wrap texts, change the text style, make headers bigger, change alignment per each column and adjust style the way you like. Now we have a simple table representing our data. Let's create a salary aggregation table with more extensive calculations to calculate the minimum, maximum and median salaries per position. First, let's make our table a bit smaller. Add one more chart table with heat map. As always, Data Studio takes random values to represent here. We want to see stats per position. Select position in dimensions, remove dimensions you don't need. Here is a simple heat map. Now it represents sum of salaries that makes no sense for us. Let's start with average. Rename the column to average and choose the proper calculation. Now we need to calculate median. For this, add one more metric. It will also be a salary but represented in a new column. We select median function and rename metric to median. Now we select salary metric again, select minimum function and rename it as well. We do the same for maximum. Adjust the table size. We also want to see the number of applicants per each position. For this, select application ID in metrics and count function. Now we can see how many applicants we had per each position. Rename this metric to applicants count.
Now, let's move the count column closer to the position name and sort by this metric. I personally don't like all those colors, so let's apply a bit of styling. Go to Style. Here you can see that each column has its own color. I choose this color for better readability and select it for all columns. Keep a different color for count, as it doesn't calculate salary metrics, but the number of applicants. Adjust the size of each column to make them more readable. And here are our salary stats. The calculations table is quite useful, compact and easy to work. But how to work with the second table? It's pretty huge and unhandy. We can use filters to navigate through the information. There are different types of filters. Those applied locally to a single table, chart or any other control that represents data. And those applied to the whole page. Let's have a look at them first. In the top menu, select the date range. It can be useful to get stats for a certain period of time, this month, quarter, year or a custom time frame. Click on the date range and drop it on our page. By default, it takes out the date range that we can use. Let's create a default date range this quarter and press apply. This filter has been applied to both tables. We can see less positions listed. In the data table, we can see that in this last quarter, 354 applicants applied. Now let's see how it looks in the view mode. You can select a different time, for example this year, and apply. Both tables have been updated. You can use a present or a specific start and end date. Now click Filtering Control and drop it to our board. It automatically picks applicant ID. That doesn't make sense. I would like to change it to country. Select it in the Dimensions field. The filter has also showed as a default sum. We are interested in count of applicants per country. We select Applicant ID metric, count function, and now we can see the number of applicants. Let's use the country filter. Say you want to see the candidates from Singapore only. Hover over it and click Only. Now you can see all candidates from Singapore and the stats updated accordingly to the specific country and time frame. Remember, that both filters work together. Let's add one more filter to see how filters work together. We change dimension to recruiter name, rename it, select count right away in metrics. Go to view mode and see the recruiter filter. You can see the lastly had this number of applicants. If you apply Poland, you will see that the total number of applicants per recruiter has changed, so now you can have an intersection of specific recruiter and the country Poland. You can choose a specific time frame and see that the number of Polish applicants processed by Leslie has changed as well. There are filters which can be applied to a single table. Imagine you need to see the applicants who are now at the Profile Review stage, select the table, go to Properties panel, select Add Filter, name it Profile Review Stage, pick Include, select Dimension Stage, equal to Profile Review, save. Keep it in mind that this filter is not applied to any other charts or tables, it will work only for this table. Use the OR logic and combine two or more values to match. Or switch to IN and write a list of options separated by commas. You can use AND operator as well. You can make filter interaction even cooler. Filter the whole page by making a certain table behave as a filter. It makes sense to use this calculation table as a filter. 
Select the table, scroll down in the Properties panel and tick Apply Filter. Go to the View mode, now click on each position in the Aggregation table and you will see that the second table changed. It works together with other filters we have just set up for the whole page. I like when things look cool, so let's add styling. Add a rectangle area, place it in the top to mark the filter area. Send to back. To mark filter visible, color the text white and remove a border shadow. Now it looks fancier. We can select multiple properties and change style for all them at once. You can sort information by specific column by clicking on the headers. To get back to default, click on the arrow up here. Let's make our report even more informative. Clone this page, go to Page, Duplicate Page. Let's rename the first page to Candidates and the second one to Geography. In the Geography page, remove the table with data and add chart Geomap. Adjust the size of the map. You can see that Data Studio has correctly picked the dimension country, as we identified it from the very beginning. Select the count function for applicant ID metric. Now we can see the countries highlighted according to the number of applicants received in a selected time frame. Try to use filters. Select the United States only and you'll see the US highlighted only. You can hover over each country and see the metrics. As for any other table or chart, all the filters apply in a similar way. If you select front-end developer, you will see countries where we've got applications for this position. Apply the filter on map, click on the US and you'll see stats only for the US. Click again to get back to all stats. On the map, you can use zoom area, world, continent or subcontinents. For example, we can select America and see America only. Let's go to the list of pages, duplicate geography page and rename it to charts and scorecards. Here we remove map, but leave the calculations table. Click at the chart, scorecard. Scorecards show one aggregated metric based on the filtered results. Let's show the number of applicants on the scorecard and compare it to the previous period. Select applicant ID and count function. Rename it to applicants. You can apply a comparison date range. Let's choose for previous period. If we have this month selected, the comparison range will be the previous month. Let's filter this year and we'll see that we had more applicants compared to the previous year. Let's tune the style a bit. If you don't want to see percents but absolute changes, go to Style and tick Absolute Change. Align in the middle, change the color of comparison numbers, I like when the scorecards have borders, so we use colors and border style to change them. Now we have beautiful scorecard. Let's see the proportion of applications per position from the total number of applications. Let's use the tree map, select position in dimensions and count for applicant ID in metrics. Let's add a second dimension recruiter name and turn on drill down option. Select one level to show. Go to the view mode, select data unlist and click the arrow down to drill down to the number of applications processed by each recruiter. When you select the filter, it will be applied to all the graphs, tables and scorecards. Now let's use bar chart to see how many new applications we receive daily. Choose the bar chart Dimensions application date, metrics applicant ID with count function. Sort by application date, 
select Ascending Order. Even if you have a longer date range selected, the chart show you only 10 bars. To change this, go to Style, Amount of Bars, Clear Number to see all the bars of the selected time range. Back to Data and let's select a Breakdown Dimension position. Now we have a separate bar for each position per day. However, we want all the bars to be stacked. Go to Style and tick Stacked Bars. Now all applications per specific date are divided by position and appear in a single bar. Let's select a shorter time range, for example one month. When you hover over a field, you can see the number of applications per position. Now let's adjust the size of this chart. In the view mode, when you click on the position, the bars with applications for this position will get marked. We can also add a simple line chart to see the overall number of applicants per day. Don't forget to change the naming of the dimensions. Select Application Date in Dimensions and Applicant ID with Count function in Metrics. When you select a filter, it will be applied to all the graphs, tables and scorecards. Let's take a quick look at the objects that can make your reports even more impressive. Add a new page. In Data Studio, you can type simple text and stylize it. You can insert any image. Or you can embed a web page right into your report. Let's visit our website. You can even scroll this website right in Data Studio. You can change the theme to simple dark or get back to the light theme. Data Studio has many more helpful features to use. Today we showed you the very basics. For more tutorial about Data Studio, subscribe to our channel. If you found this video helpful, press like. Visit railsware.com to learn more about our services and products. We help startups to build great data-driven software solutions. This is all for today. Thank you for your attention and see you next time. Bye.